So uh, I would say next. So uh, on the 8th of December 2019, a man by the name Mr. Chen came into an emergency room in a hospital in Wuhan complaining of cough and he had viral pneumonia. He was admitted, he did well, he discharged. His wife got uh, this, uh, the disease, she was admitted, discharged. But later, during the month of December 2019, many patients presented with bad respiratory illness. By the end of the month, there were 27 patients who were admitted with viral pneumonia. Seven of them got sick enough to go to the ICU. An ophthalmologist, Dr. Li Wenliang, was the first whistleblower who said there's something wrong. We are seeing something that's very similar to SARS that, was, that happened more than 15 years ago. He got the disease by the end of December, and because of what he said, he was arrested, and he was forced to make a confession that is his, he is spreading rumors, and that what he said about the virus is not true. Later on, as you see, patients came in with what we call adult respiratory distress syndrome, white lungs. And when you have this, it's bad, it's bad whatever the reason. So this is a bad disease, high mortality. That's what we call it in medicine. Wuhan Sea Market was closed the beginning of, the, of January. The idea was because this market has so many um, animals, dead, alive animals, all kinds of animals, sea, sea, seafood, of course. The idea was that this is a, a, an infection that's coming from animals. It's not a human-human transmission. If we close the market, we'll stop the outbreak. But as all of you know, this did not happen. The outbreak did not stop when Wuhan uh, Sea Market was closed. Next, please. And because we live in the era of big data, where big data is available, and we can learn about things in ways that we never thought we can do that. The genome, the new virus was isolated. We knew it's a coronavirus. It has a new genome. It's a new virus that's not similar to other viruses. You can actually today very easily go to the NCBI website and search for SARS-CoV-2, which is the new name of the virus, and check the whole genome. And if you wonder what this is, uh, looks like, you are looking at 30,000 bases, 30,000 nucleotides, ACTG, that makes the whole genome of the new coronavirus, similar to other coronaviruses. It's lots of data. If you compare it to the HIV virus, for example, it's 9,000 bases, so this is kind of big. And a single-stranded RNA virus, which means this virus has the ability to mutate very rapidly. It's not stable. It's not like our DNA, which is double-stranded. This is single-stranded RNA. So it's very, very unstable. It mutates very, very rapidly. So the first thing that uh, uh, scientists do when they see a sequence like this is to do something called BLAST. This is a BLAST. BLAST is basic local alignment searching tool. You take this piece of, of uh, sequence, and try to match it with any other sequence because that's the way we will tell where this is coming from. Now the line in green is the query, so this is the new virus genome. The line the, on the bottom is the SARS virus genome. You can see there's some gaps. So this virus is around 80% similar to the new SARS virus. It's not really the one, it's not really the origin to have to say that a virus is the origin of another virus, they have to be 99% similar. So this is around 80%. The, on the top, in the middle, this is the bat SARS-like virus, which is 89% similar to the new virus. Still, there's a gap. And the gap you see here is where the S protein is. The S protein is a very important protein because this is where the virus attaches to the ACE2 receptor on the surface cell to get into the cell. So this is a very important region. So this region was really a place of heavy research. And we thought this is something new. But then a new virus 
came, which is RAT G13. If you saw the lines, it's what the third line is continuous line with no interruptions. It's 96% similar to the new virus. So it's still not the origin because it's not 99%, but it is close, very, very close. It's the closest one, really. This virus was isolated in 2013. And if we go back to the common ancestor, where these viruses really diverge, where did they uh, split? Because you know, we, can, we know the rate of mutation of the genome, and if we go back in time, we can tell when these genomes, which are 96% similar, where do they meet? They meet in 19, around 1990. Or maybe if, if, we, if we think that the genome is not mutating at that rate, maybe if it's low mutating, then it's around 1950. Something like this. But most scientists believe it's around 1990. That's where the, G, the two genomes split. Now, as you know, many people said this is an engineered, uh, manipulated genome. And uh, uh, I'll go to that. But just have a look on the coronavirus. The coronavirus, because it has these spikes, these are the S proteins. This is where this, the virus attaches itself to the ACE2 receptor. And because it mutates very rapidly, it's very hard to make a vaccine. Because to make a vaccine, you need a stable protein that you vaccinate the body to. This is the problem with the coronavirus. It keeps mutating. It's like the HIV virus. Uh, it keeps mutating, so you cannot really make a uh, vaccine that, or antibodies of the body that will really be directed to the, to the, to the uh, virus. So it's very, very difficult to make a, a vaccine for these viruses. Next, please. Oh, this is the S protein. This is how it looks like. And importantly to know, it's made of two domains mashed together. And that's, that's really the magic of the, the, uh, uh, the protein. And when it attaches itself to the ACE2 receptor, it makes very strong attachment that the cell needs even to work to detach the S protein so, uh, so in order to free the virus inside the, the, the cell. Next, please. So this is not the first time coronavirus uh, jumped from animals to uh, human beings. You are all aware of the SARS, as I said. It's jumped from civets to humans, 2003. We had 8,000 cases all over the world. 800 people died. So it's 10% mortality, but the, 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 the outbreak stopped. Nobody really knows uh, why SARS stopped. This is a big question. People think it's public health measures. It's so many theories, but really nobody knows for sure why SARS stopped. And then we have the MERS. The MERS is a virus that jumped from camels to uh, uh, human beings, and uh, the outbreak started in Saudi Arabia. I'm not sure if you know that really the first two cases of MERS occurred, uh, were diagnosed here in Jordan. We did not know that by the time, but retrospectively, people go, went back and analyzed an outbreak that happened here in Jordan and found two patients who were the first ever to get MERS. The virus affected 2,500 people, Mortality is high, 35%, but it stopped because the virus is weak. MERS virus goes from the camel to the human, and then after a short chain of transmission, the virus is so weak it cannot be transmitted, cannot have human to human transmission. Now this paper here, this paper here made a buzz. Uh, maybe many of you heard that the new coronavirus uh, was made from H a combination of corona and HIV, or SARS and HIV. Indian uh, researchers looked at inserts, uh, new pieces of genome that were inserted in the genome of the old uh, SARS virus on the S, S protein. And they found that these inserts came from HIV uh, genome. They made a big mistake because to prove these things, you need to look at statistics. There's a value called E value. It tells us how by chance, you find something. So for example, if you have a book with 1,000 pages and you look for the word hospital in the book, you will find it. But it does not mean, mean that this book is really written about hospitals. It's the same. These are RNA uh, viruses. They all mutate. So to have a sequence in another genome, it does not mean anything except if you get a very, very low E value, one in a million, really. But the E value in this example was very high, it was in hundreds. So this all bogus and this paper was uh, withdrawn and it's considered falsified. So anybody says HIV is related to coronavirus is wrong, this is not the case. Most scientists, most virologists, everybody, not most, all, 
believe that this is, uh, this is a naturally occurring virus. Next. So what's new in this virus? Why is it so bad? There are two regions that are very important. The one on, uh, on the left, you see, it's, it's, it's a receptor binding domain where the virus attaches itself to the cell and uh, uh, there are six highlighted amino acids which are different from the SARS and they give the virus great ability to attach itself to the receptor. Now these are different even from the RAD G13 virus which is 96% similar. They are very similar to the pangolin uh, genome, the pangolin who actually nemil. So maybe again you hear that actually nemil is the source of the new um, uh, uh, coronavirus. It's not, but maybe this is a really a combination. Maybe the virus uh, with so many messages between animals and humans, going back to animals, it adopted to the uh, shape of the human ACE2, making itself very perfect, but also got some pieces of its genome from uh, other animals. Maybe it's bat, human, pangolin, human, bat, human, etc. With, with so many pages, messages, the virus got this ability to, uh, to really be perfect in the way it attacks the cell and attaches itself to its surface. This part shows another important part because I told you the S protein has two domains linked to each other. So this, what they call polybasic cleavage site, sometimes viruses, even in culture, in cell culture, when they undergo so many messages, they get this, uh, this part, which is naturally occurring uh, 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 cleavage site. Here it's four amino acids uh, that gives the, the, uh, the uh, domain some flexibility and make the protein again perfect in attacking the cells. Next, please. So you know, SARS went slowly, infected people slowly. If we compare it to the new coronavirus, it's the, the, the outbreak is very rapid, especially in China. It went very rapid uh, in ways that nobody thought is possible. There's a measurement that virologists use to, to measure how infectious a virus is, which is called R0. They, they, they read it like R0. Uh, so R0 for the uh, new coronavirus is around three to four. So every, every one infected individual can infect three or four individuals. This is very infectious. But it's not only the virus itself. Maybe because Wuhan is the center of traffic in China, where all train stations meet in Wuhan city, and for different reasons, this, is, this helped the virus spreading all over China and then all over the world. The situation today is scary. Next, please. Yesterday, we passed the 100,000 infected people all over, all over the world, 3,400 mortality. But be aware that not all patients get diagnosed. There's so many people who get mild disease or asymptomatic disease, and they don't have the manifestations of the illness, and those people will not be counted. So we think the mortality of the new coronavirus, or SARS-CoV-2, causing the disease which is called uh, COVID-19, is less than 1% for the general population. But if you get sick enough to go to the hospital, it's 10 to 15%. If you are very sick, you go to the ICU with good medical care, it's 50%. So that's that's what, what's scary. The scary thing is that the virus at one point will push so many people to hospitals, so many people to ICUs that we will not be able to cope with the numbers of people who will be very sick at the time and needing care. So comparing the, the maybe you saw this before, it's all over the, uh, the internet. Comparing the virus, uh, you, when you go to the right, the, the virus is more uh, uh, in, infectious, uh, and when you go up, it's, it's a more lethal uh, virus. So the virus, the, the new virus is in the middle, very close to the Spanish flu, and polio, very close to polio. But it, it, its ability to spread is this than chicken box and measles, and its ability to kill is this than Ebola, uh, MERS and SARS. So what happens? When the virus gets into the cell, the virus makes the cell sick and the cell should die. Cells of the human body die in two ways. First one is apoptosis, which is also called programmed cell death. The cell folds itself and makes itself ready to die and mark itself for the immune system to come and clear it. So this is in a white blood cell engulfing a sick cell and eating it. However, next, 
Another not good way to die is what we call autophagy. So here the virus uh, really eats the cell from inside and make itself, make the cell a house for the virus, but the cell won't die. From outside, the cell looks normal. The immune system does not recognize the cell and it will not attack it. The cell will remain like a safe haven for the virus. It's sanctuary, a place where the virus will be hiding to make, uh, to make new viruses, thousands of viruses in the cell, while the immune system is checking from outside and nothing is, is not usual, business as usual. There's somebody inside telling the cell not to die. There's somebody inside telling this, the, the cell, we are okay, we are not dying, we should not call 911. Who is this bad guy? This is a piece of uh, uh, paper that we uh, recently wrote and submitted yesterday, inshallah, will be accepted in a good journal about our theory about how the, the virus is working. And this is coming from a study called drug repositioning. Because all the data is available, we looked at SARS patients who were diagnosed in 2013 in Canada and compared the sick patients to healthy individuals and looked at drugs that may fix the problem of the host, restore the immune system. Almost all drugs have some link to this in the middle of this protein, HSP90, heat shock protein 90 very critical protein. It tells the cells that we are okay, do not die, do not fuse, or do not open the lysosomes. Lysosomes are bacteria of acidic material. They are like, like stomachs of the cell. If they open inside the cell, they will digest everything, the cell will die, and the story is done, because we want the cell to die. Any infected cell should die, so the immune system can get rid of it. But the HSP90 is activated, it tells cells not to die, and that's very bad. So if we attack this protein with inhibitors, that there are some inhibitors out there that are used for cancer, and this is maybe the link between my work as an oncologist and this work, uh, which considers a virus. Viruses use the same techniques that cancer use to hide from the immune system. And HSP90 is uh, a leader in this, uh, in this uh, uh, mechanism. I mentioned all of this, and uh, we are living through this. The most scary part is the rightmost part, Iran. First case of uh, COVID-19, 19th of February, 2020. Today, around 5,000 cases. This is a full-blown disaster. This is why Iran, and in the near future, maybe Egypt, will be really the source of the international outbreak or pandemic. Communities where people with, we have very limited public health limited resources, people do not follow the instructions, the virus can go very rapidly. And as I told you, the problem that you, we may need to go to a hospital and you will not find a bed in the ICU or in the hospital, that may, will make the disease more fatal. The good thing, there's a good thing that we are a young population and people like you in the room would be okay. So it's very, very hard for somebody below the age of 30 to get sick. Actually, we are worried about people above the age of 70, especially those with heart failure and diabetes, etc. But that does not mean we should not be cautious. Today, the Ministry of Health tweeted that we should follow the instructions even if we think they are stupid. And I totally agree, even if we get instructions that may not sound right for us, like close schools, do not go for Jum'ah prayer, maybe we need to listen, maybe we need to follow. We have a very bad example in Iran that we don't want to duplicate, inshallah. So in Wuhan and in developed world, they have resources like this. They can handle sick patients. They can get people out of the ICU when they get sick. But in places like India, uh, you have no infection control. You have no resources. If the virus comes, gets into a hospital like this, God knows what will happen next. Thank you.